Hey guys, for the last two and a half months, we've had the MX Fuel 14 inch cutoff saw and core drill on Stan's job site. Now, Stan's a Toolbox Buzz crew member and he works at a commercial job site in Boston. And most of the stuff we've been hearing about the MX Fuel equipment is that it's costly and there's lack of runtime. And while that's mostly true, we wouldn't be Toolbox Buzz if we didn't report to you back our findings and opinions on a real job site. So, in this review, we specifically looked at supplementing gas equipment, expectations and limitations with the MX fuel equipment, where this equipment best fits on a commercial job site, cost, why to use it, and um, the story basically starts with our daily morning phone call that Stan and I usually have. Stan's a project manager who works at a very big firm in uh, commercial construction. They actually build skyscrapers in Boston. Story goes something like this. I call him every morning, so it's like, hey buddy, how's it going today? And this particular morning he says, not great. I can't get the coring subcontractor to come out here until Thursday. I'm dead in the water until I have these core hole drills, these, uh, hole, these cores drilled. So Stan goes on to complain how the, it's a real constraint for him in keeping up with changes and issues that happen on the job site in real time. And that means that getting a con uh, concrete slab cut or a concrete cores done ASAP. So after this conversation, Stan thought about the MX fuel equipment that he had, um, and he used them to achieve his concrete cutting, uh, asphalt cutting and coring, and he basically stayed on schedule. So here's some of the feedback that he learned from that experience. What Stan learned was that the MX fuel equipment clearly does not have the runtime of a gasoline powered saw. We know that, nobody's saying that. But his entire crew loved the idea of the battery powered saw in confined spaces. And, and you know, they use them for quick cuts where you don't have to deal with mixing gas or pull starts. Um, look, the, these guys are the guys that work inside of manholes and deep trenches. They don't want to be breathing those fumes. The same goes for cutting in interior or occupied spaces. Sometimes they're working in the buildings that are occupied. The 14 inch MX saw eliminates that frustration of a gas product from the starting, the mixing, the fuel, and the oil, the engine maintenance, the noise, and the vibration. Um, one crew member told Stan how much he loved the idea of the 100% certainty that the tool will start, no matter what the temperature was outside, because it's a battery tool. Um, no pulling, no choking, no wasted time, no colorful language needed to start the cutoff saw. Um, so Stan's field experience basically tracked in agreement with Milwaukee's factory data. He had four fully charged batteries. He was able to cut 28 linear feet in street asphalt and he had three batteries depleted and one battery was about half remaining. Each of the crew members that used the saw were impressed with the electric motors torque and power, and many of them uh, remarking that, you know, this thing's a beast or this thing has the same cutting speed as a two cycle gas saw. Part of the challenge with remotely located asphalt cutting is how to provide the constant flow of water onto the blade. Now in Stan's case, he already had the uh, M18 switch tank, um, the water supply kit. This tank holds four gallons of water, it contains a battery operated pump. Um, the quick connector coupling on the on the end of a 10 foot hose clips onto the 14 inch saw with no issues. So without the water supply tank, what would the crew normally have done, right? Well, they, they used a let's bang this out approach method, which is basically splashing a little bit of water out of five gallon uh, bucket onto their cutoff saws. Not very efficient and not, not really good of dust uh, containment. So after using the water supply, they were impressed. Um, they liked the setup and they even joked about their Fred Flintstone method that they use, the splashing method. One of the best liked features that they liked on the cutoff saw was on the bottom of the saw and it was the wheels. And um, the crew did not have to support the weight of the saw. They used the wheels um, to, to basically, the pavement supports the weight of the saw and they were able to roll the wheels. And they really liked that they could use their effort, their, their muscle effort to focus on the plunge depth and the speed of advancement and stuff like that. They remarked about the lack of fatigue and strain on their backs. The end result was that the Milwaukee equipment allowed Stan 
to just be, get a timely start on opening up that roadway and excavating a test pit with no delays. Now, while the runtime of the battery powered piece of equipment will not match a gas saw, it just won't. It does go toe to toe with power and torque and Stan confirms that. The, uh, the added convenience of instant start, no exhaust fumes, um, better engine noise, it was, it's just way better than gas equipment in that regard. But Stan's story doesn't end there. A few days later, his electrical subcontractor needed to core several four and a half inch holes in a recently installed electrical manhole. Um, Stan initially tried to contract, uh, contact his coring company to do the work and they were basically behind a few days. It's reality, especially with COVID. Everybody's crazy busy. So when Stan told the electrical subcontractor that he had an, a Milwaukee MX Fuel core drill, they jumped at the opportunity and wanted to try it. The first task was to core two holes in the manhole that allowed for two additional conduits to go um, from the transformer to a secondary feeder cubicle and into a, um, a distribution manhole. Stan told, uh, told me that he was, he was really curious to see how the crew would, would actually set up the Milwaukee core saw um, in that confined manhole space. And it's interesting to note that the MX core drill stand that uh, comes with this has an equipped vacuum system that actually holds it in a position on the surface. Stan didn't have a vacuum pump and didn't use this feature but it is an option for mounting the drill on the, on the, with the stand. Um, instead of the vacuum system, Stan's electrician used a drilled in concrete anchor and a threaded rod, basically uh, protruding out of the concrete. He then aligned uh, the elongated hole in the center of the drill stand over the threaded rod. So he used a small uh, unistruct piece on top of the stand and it basically was able to secure the, the drill in place. Now Stan's electrician used the um, four and a half inch wet core bit to make these holes, right? Wet saw core bit. Uh, and they worked remotely from building services. So they, again, they used the, uh, the M18 switch tank and that provided the water for the coring operation. It worked great. Like the laborers uh, cutting the asphalt on the road, the electricians loved the, the water tank <laughs> and equipment. Um, the ability to adjust the flow rate to, correct, to the correct amount of water that they needed without having to, you know, fill a tank or whatever. It was just, it was nice. Now, once the electricians positioned the equipment, the coring proceeded with no issues. During that operation, the electrician experienced two safety features on the core drill. First, the clutch engaged, and the motor, when the core, um, when the core gets bound up, it engages, and the first time that happened, the electrician looked right up at Stan and said, that's impressive. Now, coring is absolutely dreaded because of kickbacks and bind-ups, right? It's dangerous and nobody likes it. People have even lost their teeth before. The second uh, was the auto stop. And that was the second feature that the electrician liked and, and experienced. When the motor goes from a state of being loaded to a sudden unloaded condition, the motor shuts off. That way, coring blindly into a space means you know, it stops, so the user knows he's not gonna go and, and, and uh, go too far into a space, an unforeseen background or backdrop, and hit something inside that space. Um, the coring operation only took a couple of minutes for each hole. In less than two hours, two hours, the electricians made four holes on all their manholes, and they started to lay conduit. And late in the afternoon, later that afternoon, I should say, um, the work downstream of that manhole was already ready for the electrical inspector. So having the MX uh, core drill and stand allowed this project to just proceed immediately and do productive work on the same day that the need arose. This Milwaukee equipment saved Stan's project from delay. And delay cost, time is money. Having to wait two or three days for a specialty coring contractor to arrive, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm choosing this word carefully. Investing in the Milwaukee MX fuel equipment is a lot of money for any contractor. The MX drill, um, for example, and the stand is just shy of $4,000. The cutoff saw with two batteries is gonna run you online for about $2,500. Now this kind of investment, is it, in, is it justified for the commercial contractor? Stan says yes, here's why. Um, here's why it's worth the investment. Stan's current job has a liquidated damages clause that's gonna cause his company an amount that equates to about 
$2,100 a day in, 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 in liquidation costs, right? So it's a damages. The fuel equipment avoided that waste of time and the road works got started right away in the pits and he also got his cores done. He also avoided um, delays with those electrical contractors. So Stan calculated that having the Milwaukee MX fuel equipment available to go with minimal startup uh, was worth $12,600 and saved money. That value is just shy of two times the value of the equipment cost. Now Stan's 100% sure that he's gonna probably use this equipment 25 or more times in, in, in the next one or two years. So right out of, the out of the box, he sees the investment is paid off and he's making money off these tools. And the rest of us, you know, when we justify having this equipment or, or, or purchasing this equipment, you've got to think of time as money. So both of these projects were in remote locations. They did not have external power. They didn't have ex external sources of water. With this equipment system, the work proceeded as soon as the tools showed up. That's great. These are real examples of why MX Fuel Equipment is an excellent investment to save time and money in the commercial contracting world. And guys, that's Stan's story. This is real. This happened in Boston a few weeks ago. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and please hit that notification bell right there. I'm Rob Robillard. We'll see you next time here at Toolbox Buzz.